Hello, everybody, and welcome to Mind Body Green's beauty podcast, Clean Beauty School. I am your host and Mind Body Green's beauty director, Alexandra Engler. On this podcast, we explore beauty through the lens of well being. And on today's episode, I feel like I am going to be uh, <laughs> learning so, so much because we have a woman on who is just a absolute wealth of knowledge with all things skincare. I am so excited for this episode because I have been using uh, some of the products that she has had a hand in, um, most notably a newish retinol that I'm sure we'll talk about on today's episode. But you know, without further ado, I will bring her in. Welcome, Christina Holy. Thank you so much for having me. Happy to be here. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, You know, I always start off these episodes by allowing the audience to get to know you a little bit better, as well as myself. Um, You know, I I feel like you are such a um, a classic and longtime favorite person in the clean and natural beauty space. But you know, I I would just love to hear more of your story and how you found yourself in the beauty industry? Um, Yeah, you know, I'll I'll say that it hasn't really been a um, linear path or one that I I really planned. Um, It's been a very intuitive sort of organic process um, and probably lifelong as well. I mean, as far as I can remember, I've always had so much curiosity about people and the human body. Um, my father was a trauma surgeon, so a huge influence on me. And, um, yeah, I was, I was just always one of those kids that asked why. (laughs) Um, and I'm still that way. I, I really have this desire to understand things fully or just not care about it at all. (laughs) You know, I need to kind of start from the, from the beginning and take it all the way through. So, um, you know, I just think that's notable because that's kind of the person that I am. Um, And I've I've always just loved meeting new people and talking to people. And that's a big part of the work that I do. Um, And it's it's a really genuine part uh, part of who I am. And so let's see, after high school, I went to college. I um, studied engineering at Cal Poly University. And, you know, honestly, at this point in my life, I had no idea what I wanted to do. The engineering track was suggested by my parents so that I would have a fallback plan and always be able to get a job. Um, but, you know, quickly into into university, I realized that engineering was not for me. <laughs> and um, I, I didn't like it at all. And in fact, I actually wasn't very good at it. Um, but I didn't know what else to do. Um, I was a little bit of a, a late bloomer, I think. I just wasn't really... Um, I wasn't sure who I was at this point or what was interesting or what I was passionate about. So I just stuck with it and graduated. Um, I was also like a very determined young person. (laughs) I was like, this is hard. That means I must conquer it. Um, So I graduated and then honestly never um, touched the world of engineering ever again. Um, And, you know, my 20s were kind of a group of years where I dabbled in many things. I I said, okay, well, I know I don't want to be an engineer, but I don't know what else to do. Um, I knew that I didn't want to be a doctor, having grown up with a father who was a doctor. I just didn't want to be part of that world and have that be my lifestyle, particularly. But I knew that I had so much interest in understanding the human body. Um, So, you know, I got really into yoga. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> all sorts of aromatherapy. I was like taking random classes here and there. And um, finally, I was, I was like, I think I want to get into medicine making. And so I looked into programs that, um, you know, in the States, herbal medicine classes. Um, and my interest there was around how you could influence the body using plants. I thought that was really cool. I was like, okay, well, you know, I was a a girl, right? I had all these hormonal fluctuations. I was starting to understand why they were happening. Um, You know, all these fluctuations in energy and, and I was 
taking a lot of time myself to understand my own body and my own hormonal balance and why things were the way that they were. And I started playing around with, with herbs and working with naturopathic medicine doctors and using aromatherapy. And I just thought it was, it was really amazing how you, how you could do that. So, um, Anyways, I, I I looked into all these programs and nothing was that interesting to me. And then someone told me about a school in uh, in Paris, and it's actually in Versailles, outside of Paris. And it's this uh, small uh, perfume and cosmetic formulation master's program. And in order to go to this school, you have to have a background in, in chemistry. And I didn't have a background in chemistry. And so what I did was I printed out my curriculum from engineering school and kind of wrote a letter convincing this program that I had plenty of background in science, which I honestly did. And they made an exception and they let me in. And it was amazing. Um, the school was so heavily focused on, um, on perfume, but, but on this, on the whole olfactory system and really learning how to tap into that. And, and that was so interesting because in America, we aren't really raised to understand anything about, you know, what is smell. And, and I remember on the first day we had this pop quiz, like, which was to write out the description of strawberry, the fragrance of strawberry. And I was like, what? Like, uh, no. I don't think I could do that. And I consider myself to be like very into fragrance. I love perfume, but I don't think I would be able to do that. I, exactly. Mine was blank. <laughs> but, you know, what I learned was, you know, over the course of the program was really how to tap into that and some of these descriptor words. And it was it was so cool. And, and one of the reasons why I chose this program was because it was um, it was focused on mass market perfume and cosmetics. So it was Chanel, L'Oreal, Estee Lauder, Givadon, all these big houses that were kind of running the industry. And that was so interesting and desirable for me because I was already on this sort of like natural organic page. I mean, that's how I was raised. And so I, you know, had all these opinions about mass market industry, but I wanted to really understand it so I could validate those opinions. And so we learned how to make, you know, cleansers and detergents and all this stuff that would be on the shelves at, you know, a supermarket. And it was, it was really, it was really interesting. And Wait, can you elaborate a little bit more on that, that you, you know, you, you had these thoughts about the mass market and then working within them confirmed them? Like, what do you mean by that? Yeah. So you know, I, I had made these decisions for my life at a young age that I did not want to use these products, that they contained ingredients that I wanted to avoid, and also that they weren't as strategic as the clean beauty industry. And um, those were judgments. And I didn't know anything about the mass market industry. And so by getting in there and working with these teachers and really understanding that so much of that world was driven by marketing, and that so much of these products is not about active ingredients or skin health or body health and wellness, and that they are, you know, those, those products are the beauty industry which was not what I was interested in doing. I wanted to go into health and wellness. And at this point in my life, I had no interest in skin. So I didn't know this was going to happen. So I was, I was more on that medicinal herbal track. Um, but, but the, the training was such high quality in terms of organic chemistry and really understanding, you know, formulation science, because these are the, these are the masters, right? These are the people that have been doing it forever. And the teachers were amazing. And so I wanted that caliber of education, but to still be able to sit back and be like, I'm never going to actually work in this industry. I just want the knowledge. Um, it's, it's sort of like, I could compare this to going to Western medical school and then becoming an acupuncturist, right? You know, like that would be amazing. I have actually thought about doing that, um, <laughs> but I don't want to go back to school. Um, so, you know, so that, that program was, was great and very valuable. And um, towards the end, we had to pick an apprenticeship, like some, some company to do a stage with. And I didn't want to, 
I didn't want to do that. So I chose, I found this woman in Paris who had a very elite skincare practice. Um, her name is Joelle Shioko. And she also had, what was interesting to me about her was all this attention she got in Paris. Like everyone would be like, oh, you see Joelle. Amazing. And, and also she had this skincare line that was very niche and had a really great reputation of, as being strategic and natural and clean. And I was like, what is that about? So um, I convinced her to let me apprentice with her for about a year. And what that meant was I literally sat in a chair next to her for a year and didn't talk and wasn't allowed to talk. And I just sat there and watched her and took notes. And it was, it was actually one of the more stressful experiences of my life. And I, I note that because um, I really witnessed a massive decline on my own health during that year. And I, so here I was at the most elite skincare center in Paris, and I had like full body rashes and hives and I had acne and I had never really had acne. And um, my whole body was just freaking out. You know, I'd walk in the building and I would get this rash that would like come all the way up my neck and I'd have to wear turtlenecks. And I was so embarrassed and it was just this, it was, it was really intense. And I was, you know, with this woman who was healing all these people and had these magical hands and these magical products and nothing was helping me. And um, that really piqued my curiosity and skin. I was like, I have access to every tool here that people are spending $3,000 a treatment here and nothing is helping me. So I got blood work and I remember the doctor was like, well, you are a 30 year old woman with a blood panel of a um, breastfeeding woman. And I was like, I was like, what the hell? Like I had really low estrogen and really high prolactin. Everything, you know, it was also maybe potentially, it was completely out of whack and, and why everything was feeling really bad. And I, and it was peculiar because I ate really well. Um, I exercised, I slept, but it was like my nervous system that was, that was, I could not get a hold of, and it was throwing anything, everything out of balance. And it was so significant that it was manifesting in my skin. And so that kind of locked in my interest of skin. I was like, yeah. this is this really cool system that I don't really know anything about. And it is so, yes, products can do a lot, but it is really, really directly impacted by our nervous system, our immune system, our hormones, our body. And so from that point on, I was just dedicated. I was like, I'm so curious. This is my new lifelong path. I need to figure out why me being stressed and me feeling insecure in this role is making me have acne. That was, that was it. So, um, I started my own kind of side business to make money because the apprenticeship wasn't paid and I was going like house to house and giving treatments and talking to people about their skincare. And it was, it was amazing. I, I think I would spend like three or four hours at people's homes and do these crazy treatments and charged probably like 50 euros. Like it was, it was crazy. And I loved it. And I, I got so, I built up so many clients that I could leave the apprenticeship and I was loving life. Everything was so fun. And then I, my partner at the time wanted to go back to the States. So we moved to New York. We left Paris. And when, and this is a really funny story because literally the day I, I arrived in New York from Paris, one of my clients in Paris said, I have a friend in New York and she needs you to talk to her about her skin. Can you go to her house and give her a treatment? And I was like, okay. And I, it was the day I landed and I remember being so jet lagged and like walking over like through Dumbo with my bag and like doing, it was like a hundred million degrees. I gave her a treatment and I went home after that and she emailed me and said, you know, I'm the beauty director at Vogue. Can I write an article on you? And I was, I had no idea. And I was like, okay. And so she, she, I think. Was this, would that have been Sarah Brown? It was Celia. Oh, okay. Okay. So after Sarah, got it. And so she, um, 
she wrote this article at, that was like New York's next top facialist just landed. And I was like, oh my God, I'm not a facialist. I never went to this aesthetic school. I don't have a license. I don't have a business. I just landed what's going on. And I had, you know, a million emails and um, that's how my business started. I, I just went house to house in New York City and did home visits and treatments. And I convinced the New York State of um, Cosmetology to give me a license. I didn't actually go to the school. I just showed them my curriculum in Paris and got a letter from Joelle and they, they pr approved it and gave me a license. And then I got a business license, I got a studio and it just kind of was this really natural thing. Um, ended up moving to San Francisco and opening up a, a little studio there. And, um, you know, it, it, pretty immediately after getting to San Francisco, I had a, a very full practice, but it, it changed there. All of a sudden, all of my clients were incredibly symptomatic. And I think that this was, you know, this has always happened to me where I'll be super interested in, in something and doing research in one area and then all my clients will be like that, you know, I'll get into rosacea and then all my clients will be rosacea or it just, just the way it's happened. And so I didn't set out to work in this like department of symptomatic skin. It just happened to me. And all, this was the people that were coming to me. And I loved it because that's why I was working in the skin was to help people figure that out and help people heal. And, um, you know, that's, that's kind of, kept evolving since then. And, and I, you know, mostly work online virtual consultations now, but it's, it's still with the same type of clients and I still do the exact same work. I just don't do the, the physical treatments as much anymore, but um, you know, it's, I think the whole evolution of my career has been so much about never looking at the end result. And I still really try to practice that. And, and instead just thinking about like what feels good and like, am I still feeling passionate? Am I still interested? Okay. Yes. No. Okay. Go there. And so that being kind of the guiding force versus, you know, I never set out to be a facialist and I never set out to have a product line. It just happened. And, and I think that is why I love it so much also. Yeah. I, I could hear you uh, or I could listen to you talk about your story all day. The way you tell it is very beautiful and very eloquent. You have a, a really lovely voice too. Oh, thanks. Yeah, but you know, speaking of um, product line, how did you connect with Marie Veronique? I'm not sure if I know this. Yeah, so, so I'm working in San Francisco and I've got all these clients who have so much going on in their skin and I didn't know what to do because what I was what I was working with product wise were Joelle's products at this time. And I was making stuff from uh, ingredients I would purchase at the um, pharmacy in Paris and have my friends ship over. So it was, it didn't make any sense financially and it was, it was really complicated. And so I wanted a product that was made in California in particular, San Francisco. And I also didn't know what was going on. I was, I had a lot of clients, which now I would say was all just inflammatory, but they had dermatitis and acne at the same time. And it was this weird combination that I was not experienced in. And I had a lot of connections in the skincare industry at this time. And I was constantly trying to be connected with dermatologists and I would always just get shut down and it was really hard. You know, I would have these meetings with these dermatologists and they just did not care what I had to say. And I would have, you know, all of these client charts and pages and pages of data and patterns that I was tracking. And I was like, this is my theory. What do you think? And they were like, no, don't care. You're not a doctor. You don't have, um, you know, you didn't go to medical school. You're totally useless to us. So it was, it was hard because I needed someone to like pick their brain, you know? And so I heard about Marie Veronique and I went to her office, you know, the kind of headquarters in Berkeley. And I just walked in and she was in the back and I introduced myself. And I will say that 
we absolutely connected immediately. There's something about Marie where she has this contagious laughter and like, who doesn't want to be around that all the time, right? I just remember she would laugh constantly. I would laugh constantly and it was really playful. And it, it just felt like we were old friends. And, and also she actually really cared what I had to say. You know, I, I came in there and I said, I need help. Like, I want to know what you know about formulation and these products that you're making. This is what I'm seeing in my practice. Can, what do you think? And she gave me all the time in the world and sat down and looked through things with me and asked me questions and heard me out. And then she took her experience in the lab and formulation. And, and it was so fun and so satisfying. And I was learning so much. And I think she was learning a lot. And so... You know, she said, we, we need to help these people. Let's make them something. And so we made, um, just via tinkering in the lab, we made Barrier Restore Serum. And we put it in little bottles and wrote the labels and we're giving them to my clients and just for free at, to, to test it out. And I was seeing these amazing results and the dermatitis and the acne were both clearing up and we were like, this is amazing. And we still at this point had no intention in making a line. We were just dedicated to helping these people. And so we started making other products, Soothing B3 Serum, Intensive Repair Serum, and everything in that in the gold collaboration line. And we were just giving them away for free. <laughs> That's really funny. I mean, those very lucky people <laughs> who got <laughs> your products for free at first. The, the head of brand, this woman, Christy, um, who now I am very dear friends with and the CEO Dylan um, were like a big family. Um, at that time they were like, who's this girl, Christina? She was taking all of Marie's time using our ingredients, giving them away for free, hold the phone here. And so they really like cracked down and were like, but they were, they were so sweet and supportive also. And they were like, well, if, if you guys believe in these products then let's make them legit, you know, let's, let's do this. And I was so terrified about, the complications of, of around having a product line. I didn't want anything to do with business, you know, yeah, it's, it's tough. Yeah. And, and I also had set out my whole life to wor working really hard. So I never had to work with anybody else. <laughs> like I, I didn't want to be part of a team a business. I really like to work totally isolated by myself. And, um, so I was really hesitant. I was like, who are these people trying to take away my independence? And then um, it just it just turned out to be so different. And they're, it's, it's the most amazing team there. And um, they really believe in the work that I do and Marie does and our partnership. And so, you know, it took many years, but over uh, the span of five, six years, we just started working together more and more and more and more. And then um, COVID happened and I wanted to have a baby and it just made sense for me to kind of merge on in. And, um, it's great. They, it's, you know, the, the alignment of everyone working at that company is so strong and the goodness and, um, you know, I think we all are there cause we want it to be our job, <laughs> you know, like, of course we need to survive and make money but but we're not doing it so we can make a bunch of money and quit we're we're doing it so we can like continue to do what we're what we all care about um so so yeah so that's that's how i met them <laughs> your answer definitely uh illuminates a lot of i think the ethos behind the products that you create just because you know you were saying that so many of the people that you were seeing did have symptomatic skin and, you know, they were having these, you know, eruptions, whether that be acne, whether that be dermatitis. Um, because I mean, so much of the things that you create, so much of your products, they really do focus on the barrier. So it seems to be that was quite intentional, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, at that time, no one was really throwing that word around as much, but, um, but you know, it was, it's part of the science, it's part of the structure of the skin. And Marie has always been really 
interested in the source of inflammation and how that causes, you know, system breakdown and aging. And so she's, Marie's very ahead of the curve also. Like, so she was starting to talk about all of this stuff barrier related, you know, this was, you know, eight years ago or something. And, and, and it just made so much sense, you know, because we would track all of these these clients, like skin topical history and thinking about what they were doing to destroy this barrier, to break down their skin, sensitize it, what was going on internally that was also making it, the body very have a very hard time creating a strong barrier. So it was this hand-holding approach where, you know, and still is to this day, one of the most important parts of this company is that we are a combination of working in the field, you know, like this consistent citizen science where like I am studying real people every single day. And then Marie being this, you know, genius formulator. And that's a really great marriage because there's stuff that she will say sometimes makes so much sense if you look at the chemistry and the formulation science, but it's not going to work for a human, you know? And, and the same thing with me sometimes I'm like, this is what I want. And she's like, no, you know, that's, we can't, we can't put that in one bottle. You know, we can put it in two bottles, but not in one, you know? And so um, that relationship is, has let us, I, I think it makes it, our products really innovative, you know, and really creative. And we're looking at, um, the real, we're, we're realistic, you know, does this work? Does this, what does this do? Does, does this benefit enough people to actually put it out there in the world? Is this a necessary product? Um, and, and that's why we're constantly changing formulations. We drop products if we don't think that they're necessary anymore. Um, you know, the team stays really on top of it, which, which I feel really proud of. Yeah, I I just have a small anecdote about the uh, about the barrier serum and how ahead of the time uh, you guys were. I remember um, years ago when this collection first launched, and I was introduced to it. I I was a beauty editor um, at a magazine at the time, and I was very much in the conventional beauty space. Like I. You know, now I am very much in the clean and natural space. So I'm inundated with it. Um, but at this time, I, I wasn't, but I was very much peak. It piqued my interest, right? And so whenever I could, you know, go and try out a product that was more on the clean and natural, I would. Uh, and I remember getting a facial at Cap Beauty down in the West Village that was this collection. I remember the barrier serum and being like, barrier interesting. I, I need to like look into this and like figure out, you know, what this uh, ingredient philosophy is. And um, it's so funny to like look back at that now because now so much of what I talk about and so much of my even personal passion about skincare is really rooted in strengthening and fortifying the barrier. So it's, I don't know, it's funny to be able to like trace back to um, certain formative moments uh, that shape kind of the rest of our trajectory. And then to one, be able to make this connection nowadays and be able to talk to you about it. Um, but it is funny. <laughs> yeah, I love that. And I, um, I miss Cap Beauty. I mean, they're still around and I love, I love them still, but I miss that treatment room. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. So, you know, I, I want to get in the conversation about how you work with people because, you know, you have mentioned uh, that you, uh, uh, you know, a part of the uniqueness that you bring to the, to the line and a part of the uniqueness about your uh, beauty practice in general is just how closely you're working with people. And I find it really interesting about how to get to the root cause of skin concerns um, because I think it's actually much more complicated than people make it out to be. And I think people often struggle with trying to get to the root cause of what the issues that they might be happening. And so I'm curious, you know, how do you go about kind of solving that puzzle with your patients? You know, what, what sort of questions are you asking and, and what are you looking at? Yeah, it, it is complicated. <laughs> You're right. Um, and it takes a lot of time, um, more time than, you know, I always want way more time with everyone that I work with because um, it's not just about what someone's eating or what they're putting on their skin. It's 
the questions I ask are, you know, the, the obvious ones, but also the ones where I can learn a lot depending on the way someone answers it. Not even, you know, the exact details what they answer, but just, you know, I'm really trying to learn someone's personality and learn their level of stress. And people lie, <laughs> you know, not in a bad way, but, you know, think about it. When we go to the doctor, you know, we lie. I, everyone lies to the doctor. People lie to me all the time. So so I, I have questions in there that are meant to kind of trick people into telling the truth, I guess. But I, um, you know, so, so I've worked with a acupuncturist, Justine Wenger, for about 10 years, and we do all of our consultations together. And our process of problem solving and looking at the root is um, something that we've come up with together from, from all this experience. And what it is, is um, asking people, you know, we, we try to create a timeline where we can map out all the different things that have happened in someone's life that would disrupt skin function or directly, indirectly influence skin function. So we start um, from childhood and, and go up all the way to where someone is now. And we look at um, all things topical. So any skin symptoms that they've had, what products they've used, what medications, just to understand, you know, because if you, if you talk to someone that says, you know, I grew up, I was always that sensitive person. I would run through the grass and have red marks on my legs and, um, you know, and then I went through puberty and I had acne and then, you know, you, you already know so much about who this person is. And that person is me. You just described me. <laughs> Continue. Sorry. <laughs> That's a common story for a lot of people, but, um, we know a lot about the skin barrier. And so, um, we know a lot about the direct association to nervous system. We know a lot about um, sources of inflammation, microbiome, all these different things. So we're just collecting information that, you know, we can put into all those boxes. And so, you know, I have made a lot of spreadsheets to kind of track my, my clients where it's like microbiome, virus, <laughs> you know, uh, history of immunity, hormones, you know, where we get as much information in all the categories. And then, then we kind of map it out and we say, okay, uh, this is, this is our, our theory. We're going to make this assumption, this assumption, this assumption, and we're going to guess that this is the reason why this is happening. Most of the time, because we have so many examples and we have so many patterns that we can lean on, we can get someone into really good shape quickly just by changing topicals and diet and some lifestyle things. So how they eat, stress levels, nervous system, and, and topicals is kind of the first, the first step because you can make massive improvements there. Um, and then if we have you know, a theory that might involve something more significant, um, some sort of infection or uh, hormonal imbalance or, or something, uh, some, you know, real deficiency, then um, we will either um, outsource to different medical professionals that we partner with. So to get blood work, Justine can order stool analysis, urine analysis. Um, you know, we'll go to testing if that if that data could be really beneficial to kind of ver validate what our theory is. Um, and then if someone does turn out to have some sort of infection or overgrowth, something like that, then we will um, refer them to the specialist to kind of do the protocol if it's kind of out of. Uh, the bounds of what Justine does. Um, and so, you know, I'll, I'll be very honest and clear, like there, we never try to be doctors, right? Like we are focused just on the skin. And, and that's really, really important to me to never, never speak out of my, my realm of knowledge or and experience. Um, but it's also why I've spent so much time connecting to other professionals and, and really creating that roundtable approach to, to um, healing and helping people. And I think I'm really good at connecting the dots, you know, so oftentimes someone will come to me and they say, well, I have a dermatologist, I have a naturopath, I have this functional medicine, but no one can understand my skin, you know, and, and I'm not there to 
recreate the wheel and change what all these doctors are doing for this person, but to create a plan that's going to maybe connect and merge some of these different philosophies and be more synergistic. Um, so, so that's, you know, that's more or less how we work. And the, the ideal is to have follow-ups every three or four months to really monitor and track progress, make changes if, if we need to, um, you know, the body, by the time we start to see symptoms manifesting, you know, at the skin surface, it means that there's, you know, kind of a chronic history of, of things going on in, internally. So it takes time to heal, you know, a lot more time than we want. <laughs> um, and so, you know, setting expectations is a big part of the work and really trying to, um, get to know someone well enough so that we can create a plan um, that will be sustainable and that they'll be interested in and able to implement, you know, because I, I, what I say to a mother of three working full time is going to be really different than a 25 year old single woman, you know, there's just, we have to be realistic. So, yeah. What sort of concerns are you seeing a lot of currently um you know is there something that's happening in 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 you know the zeitgeist that you think is influencing people's skin in a particular way because i do think it's interesting like from my perspective for example you know i feel like i'm constantly inundated with people talking about having sensitive skin or maybe dealing with hair loss and you know i think that speaks to something um what what does your practice tell you well, I think that we see a lot of um, symptoms that the direct source is a significant disturbance in the in the digestive system, you know, gut imbalances. Um, so I have a lot of adult acne, a lot of rosacea, dermatitis. Um, it all kind of comes down to gut function. Um, and I, so I, I just see so many people that are totally confused with how to eat, how to support a healthy gut. Um, a lot of inflammatory conditions, which could, which can be remedied just by balancing blood sugar, reducing glucose levels, supporting a healthy gut that can make such, such extreme changes quickly, you know, if you just focus on that. So, um, that, that, and then, and then the other thing what's happened with COVID is a lot of these kind of dormant viruses or symptoms have been flared up. So a lot more of, you know, herpes breakouts, shingles, um, uh, associated viral symptoms, which can cause rosacea flares, dermatitis flares, acne, things like that. So, um, post vaccine as well as getting the the virus itself I, I see a lot of that in clients interesting um just to touch on the gut a little bit more just because that is something that we talk about so much here and we talk about so much on the site what are ways that people are eating that you see are causing the issues and then what are some adjustments that you tell people to implement right away and i and i asked this question knowing that food and nutrition is highly individualized. So I can understand that this is probably a hard question to, to answer on a general scale, but you know, are there good rules of thumb that you kind of stick to? Absolutely. Um, so I would say people are eating too much processed foods, too much sugar, too many preservatives, um, and oftentimes too little. Uh, a lot of a lot of highly highly restricted diets, a lot of filler foods, um, and the first thing Justine and I will do for pretty much every single person, and if anyone does this, they will see benefits in in their skin and how they feel and how they sleep. Um, the number one rule around eating is try to regulate blood sugar you know, try to keep your glucose levels down. And, and, and you have to be strategic to do that. You have to think about food in a different way, fat, protein, fiber, right? So getting adequate amounts of that. Um, so that's a big thing. And then also 
Um, so, so with that fiber, thinking about getting enough fiber every single day. So we always say, shoot for 35 grams a day. Um, that can really change someone's diet quickly, have a huge impact on elimination and microbiome really quickly. But you can't just start incorporating fiber alone. You have to think about variety at the same time. Which is so, which so many people don't do. You know, people love to eat the same thing every single day. Um, you know, they're like, "Yes, I eat my arugula and spinach every day," and that that's not enough. That's not good enough. Um, you need you need a, a a lot of different vegetables every single week. 40, 50, 30, 40, 50 different vegetables every single week to get to get the right blend of micronutrients to support healthy gut function. So, so those three things, blood sugar, fiber, variety. And, and I think that if anybody just, if that's all you change, then you'll, you'll absolutely guarantee you'll see significant results. Since we were talking so much just about inflamed skin in general, I wanna ask what are some of your favorite topical ingredients for, you know, calming that inflammation and restoring that barrier? Yes. Yeah, so number one, um, support the acid mantle of the skin. Really, really important to keep the skin acidic. Um, the skin should be around 4.5 to 5.5 in the pH range. And that step can sometimes be skipped. The, the skin is equipped with the tools to adjust pH all day long. Um, but sometimes that acid mantle can be deficient and, and we can get really alkaline and be prone to more inflammation. So um, we make a product called Balancing Hypotonic, which you can use twice a day, three times a day, whatever you need to keep the skin in that healthy range. Uh, Soothing B3 Serum is a really good one for optimizing hydration, but the niacinamide as well to help reduce inflammation. Um, helps with it's niacinamide is a really important antioxidant for um, ATP mitochondrial function, energy of the cells, and it's something that declines with age and can really uh, restrict inflammation in the skin. And then, of course, Barrier Restore Serum has all of those uh, natural moisturizing factor ingredients, things that we need to regulate moisture levels in the skin, make the skin feel good and supple and healthy. Um, you know, it's, it's what, what I do is I just think about the actual layers of the skin and the components required naturally and then kind of like work up there. So, you know, starting with the, with acid mantle and, and different serums, soothing niacinamide and natural moisturizing factor, and then, you know, finish with like lipids, whatever, whatever lipids you might, might need. And, and there you go. It's, it's not that, it's not that complicated. <laughs> or maybe it is. <laughs> I I think why it is complicated because we have been taught to do so many things in our skincare routine counter to what you just said. So I think that's probably why it can be complicated, you know. Um, I selfishly have to ask about the retinol, uh, the new retinol product. Um, I teased it at the beginning of the episode, but I've been using it. I love it. It's relatively new. Um, how did this come about? That's a good question. So it what we had to make it because i was faced with this conundrum all the time where i was seeing the great results from gentle retinol night serum which is a, a gentle uh retinol serum with ascorbic acid but there are so many cases of um inflammatory skin conditions that i'm seeing and i wanted something a bit more intensive also someone for the in their 40s 50s that wants a more intensive retinoid so the the option that I could work with was something like Retin-A. And that was hard to suggest, number one, because of the fear factor associated. You say that word, half the population is going to go, no, thank you. You know, I don't want my skin to peel off. And what about sun and, you know, all these chemicals in there. And, and it's true, you know, so I don't want people to be afraid of retinol because it's my absolute favorite ingredient in the world. And I want everyone to use it. Um, maybe not babies, but you know, um, anyone over anyone over thirty should should use retinol um, in my book. But so we wanted a retinol that was more intensive, that was formulated clean, didn't have all these aggressive preservatives, and 
would not make the skin go through such a dramatic retinization period. So we've, we formulated it in a way that would bolster barrier function so that you could limit the unwanted, unwanted side effects often associated with more intensive retinoids. So that is, that was our goal. And I think, I think we did it. (laughs) Yeah. I would also agree with that. I think you did too. (laughs) Okay. So the last thing that I ask on this podcast is how you take care of yourself. Um, Why don't we start with beauty um, and most notably your skincare routine. Uh, you know, what are your go-tos? Let's see. I, I, I will admit I only use Marie Veronique products. Um, I, I change it up. You know, I think of them all as tools and I, I'm, I'm very consistent with balancing hypotonic. I use that product twice a day. I use vitamin C. We have a vitamin C plus E plus ferulic serum that I use every single morning. I, am outside a lot. It is just part of my lifestyle. So I try to protect myself from UV exposure and damage as much as possible. So absolutely vitamin C. And then I use Barrier Restore Serum. I am postpartum breastfeeding. I have very dry skin. So I really, really need that support right now. And then I use protective day oil during the day, also for added UV protection. Then I put on everyday coverage, sunscreen. It's zinc oxide only. I don't use anything with titanium dioxide. I use zinc oxide only for sunscreen. Why is that? Um, Zinc oxide is uh, a free radical generator and potentially inflammatory for the skin and something that I just prefer to avoid. Um, it's it's used in a lot of zinc oxide sunscreens because you can make the product appear um, more transparent that way. Um, but it's it's better, I believe, for the skin to avoid it. Okay. Um, so nighttime, I use the Pure Plus EO Free Oily Cleanser. I do really long or, you know, two minutes, something <laughs> like that was as long as I can handle or have the energy for, but I love to like give myself a good massage um, balancing hypotonic. And then I do an oil, usually barrier lipid complex, and then the new retinol, multi-retinol night emulsion after that. Um, so that's, you know, that's my skincare routine. Typically, sometimes I'll throw in other, other serums, depending on what's going on. I've recently, um, gotten a little more into devices. Oh, do tell. (laughs) Yeah, I, well, I am lucky enough to be, have been gifted a few and so that I have them. So I've tried them and it turns out I really like them. I use two currently. I have the Lima laser and the new, um, the new device from Therabody called Theraface. I've heard really good things. I love it so much. It's, it's wonderful. And they have all these different attachments and you can really get into the tension of your jaw and there's all these vibration, which I love on the neck. Um, they have the infrared and they have the microcurrent. It's, it's really good. And, um, I, I definitely would not take, I don't have a lot of extra time with a baby and I would not take the time to use any of these if I didn't think they were really good. And, and the, the lime is good too. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to, you know, I'm 39 years old. I don't want to do Botox. I don't want to do fillers. I have a long history of sun exposure. I'm trying to just do my best, <laughs> you know, but, but that, but, but when it comes down to beauty and this concept of beauty, I feel my most beautiful when I'm really happy you know, and when I'm really healthy, when my skin feels healthy, I feel beautiful when I'm moving a lot and um, having fun with friends, and, you know? Well, yeah. I mean, speaking of the next thing I wanted to ask you is what's your uh, well-being routine? Um, or if not the whole routine, you know, what are the core parts of it that you have to get in? Yeah. I think the, 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 main thing is movement. I just am that kind of person. I, um, and, and it's not really organized, you know, I'm just moving all day long, you know, doing chores and running around with my daughter and 
we'll dance or we'll go for a hike or I swim in, I swim in the, I re live close to the beach. So I swim a lot. Um, I love that. I, I just, it's so important for my nervous system. It's so, it helps me take a deep breath. It just, it just makes me um, feel really good. So movement is my priority every single day. And then, you know, eating well, I try again, eating to eat well, you have to actually think about it. You have to kind of work at it. So I work really hard to balance my blood sugar and eat enough vegetables. That's that's pretty much all I care about. I eat everything. I have no restrictions. But every day I say, okay, what, have, what did I eat yesterday? Because I want to make sure I don't eat that today. Yeah. I, I love that you said that. It's something that I've been trying to do lately or at least the last few months. Um, and to help me keep track, I, I have a little running list in my notes on my phone of just all the various different vegetables so I can keep track and buy, you know, um, and I do it within the week span, you know, so I'll be like, oh gosh, yesterday I had, you know, X, Y, Z in my salad. So got to switch it up and try something else. And I, I've been really enjoying it. It's kind of making a game out of getting all these various fruits and vegetables in. That's amazing. I've been suggesting that to clients. I do that myself. I have a piece of paper on our fridge and I'm like, you know, my memory, but it, it's so worth it. It will make a difference over time. Um, and it's just one of the best things we can do for our bodies. So I'm glad you're doing it too. Yeah, I love it. I've I definitely am going to stick with it. I've been doing it for, gosh, probably like two, three months now. Good. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. This was so fun. Um, I mean, just such great information. And, you know, like I said, you are just such a well-respected thought leader in this space. So I've been dying to have you on for some time and I'm so excited that we were able to make this work. So thank you. My pleasure. Um, I enjoyed it so much. Thank you for having me.